What are you hearing from Klal Yisrael? Don't say there's a Shadich in crisis. It's like saying there's a money crisis. Call a shot and get a show. Desperate for a Shadich. Something that ever said, you should call a shot once a week. <laughs> I appreciate that I have a rabbi slash doctor that agrees with me. <laughs> the biggest problem is not feeling worthy of love. There is a spark. Yay, let's get engaged. See for yourself how your wife matches your mother and see for yourself how your husband matches your father. It's insane. <laughs> you actually have to find somebody else that shows you how you can be loved so now you can love yourself for that kind of person. If she's pressing the right buttons for Ellie, right. she's going to help Ellie like a rocket soar. Am I going to have to do my own laundry? Well, I did my own laundry. I can't see you days. living alone, Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> Human beings are social animals and you're very social and you have too much to give to the world. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> this is something that I discovered. Hundreds of single women got married to, to guys that have no way of appreciating what they do for them. Marriage won't fix your problems. Marriage will make them worse. Yeah. One woman told me like she was preparing dinners for him every night. He would come home and he would make dinner. Vulnerability is the difference between success and failure. The third person today that asked me, how's your relationship with Hashem? So oh. how do we keep this bar going? Oh. 777. Okay, great. So first of all, a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure is absolutely Thanks mine. Thanks for having me. I'm, I am recording this also for my uh, podcast, Positivity. Beautiful. So we'll see how, how it will work out. But first we have a recording. So it's nice. Um, my story is very simple, I would say. Grew up in regular Haider Square in Bar Park. Beautiful. And uh, then just went uh, then just went uh, um, Yeshiva in Square, Yeshiva Katana, Yeshiva Gadol. I learned actually in, in New Square, in Square in, in Spring Valley. Then I ended up going to Yerushalayim. And learning in yeshiva over there for two years. So that you was should really know nice. that there was a Syrian guy that comes to me for help in dating. And he was almost ready to get engaged a month ago. But he has these headaches that don't go away. He's learning yeah. in yeshiva gadola in deal. Mm -hmm. So one night he says, I'm done. I can't go into my forward right. unless I get some, some help. I don't know what happened. I shouldn't put an idea into my head. I used to love to go visit the square Rebbe. I said, Sunday night, it was pouring rain, February. We're going to have a spot for you. We're going to go. So we traveled a couple to, to a couple of hours up there. We met with him. He was so gracious to us and so nice to us. Gave him chizik and told him exactly what to do. And that he's doing extremely well now. How did he get rid of the headache? How, oh, he sent him to a special head, headache specialist in uh, Manhattan. Because I knew, years ago, I knew that the Square Rebbe is very connected to a lot of big Medical, doctors. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's very connected. Right, so so he sent him to a special headache specialist and... He doesn't call me anymore. In, in English, they say no news is good news. Right. So that so means it's good. Hashem. So you went to, to Eretz Yisrael to learn there? Yeah. Um, and then I just graduated. Like most of the class got engaged. This was I was around 21. So five years ago. I'm 26 now. Mm -hmm. And then I just went to take a job like everybody else. Got and it. I worked in construction. It was the highest paying job. Um, what did your father and mother do? And how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have two brothers, two sisters. My sure. father, yeah, my father was doing, um, is still doing, has an electrical company. Beautiful. And uh, my mother has her own entrepreneurial journey, creative They're ideas, still in recipes. Bar Park in Brooklyn? So we lived in Brooklyn until five years ago. Yeah. And then they moved to Lakewood. And then a year ago, two years ago, we moved to Tom's River from Lakewood to Tom's River. How old River. are you today, Ellie? 26. Married? Single? So I'm single, yeah. Oh, wow. So okay. on the journey, yeah. Okay, so you'll have to hear a little bit about that. Right. So let's go back to you. So you finished the uh, yeshiva, you graduate. I went to work a job for two, three, three, four years. Yeah. And then I said, you know, this is stupid. I'm working for somebody else. It doesn't make sense. So I said, let me open a business, something that I really enjoy. You know, let me do my passion, my hobby, my goal in life. So I was doing, back then I was doing the social media for Michal Schnitzler, you know, the wedding yeah. singer. So yeah. Sure. It was actually this summer. We did a singles event in um, upstate in uh, Hudson Valley. Mm -hmm. He sang for us. Oh, really? Wow. He, he's big. He yeah. was, I remember him being huge in the 1990s. Yeah. And then he became, it looks like he frumed out some, some bit. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly yeah. where, where so he So you were doing went. his social media? I was doing his social I was his manager and a very close friend. Okay. Um, and I was doing the social media. So yeah. when I was needing to open a business, I said, you know what, this was something that I was doing as a hobby, but let me, how about I open it as a business and approach companies and tell them, I'll post on your Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever. Um, and so that's where I started like my own 
entrepreneurial journey, which also made me go on to social media a lot more because I was going to show people how to be like that role model. Like, look, I have this big following. So now if you want your company to have that big following, you can hire my company, Weber Media, and we'll do the same. So fast forward two years and we now have uh, we have 20 clients and have five sure. or six employees and we're doing it for the biggest companies out there like clients naturals and clients ice cream Fantastic. companies that everybody yeah, knows so I'm just really grateful for that that I'm an entrepreneur now um, and part of that was also that I was creating these videos and they just started going viral one after another which just showed just for the fact that somebody's willing to speak is why it went viral. Like I, I have podcasts and I'm very vulnerable. Our last podcast was actually with Rabbi Manas Friedman. Big which guy. I know you like. Yeah, you Love quote him. him a lot in your speeches. And yeah. so I actually told him on the podcast that I'm going on to I'm going on a date after the podcast, which was true. <laughs> so he gave me like the be- the best dating advice, which was, you know, like don't worry what she thinks about you. Make sure that she is good for you. Make sure that yeah. you like her. Make sure that, you know, um, and that helped me really a lot because I did go out and I felt like I did connect with it. You know, it was a very nice girl, but I did feel that thing like, okay, well, she's nice. I would go on a road trip with her, but I don't think that it, that there's any value that's added to my life. You didn't see her as wife material? Correct. I didn't see her. I saw her as wife material. I didn't yeah. see her as my wife material. Right, right. right. So Come like, t- so. And you sensed so yeah. that right away in one date? So, because I push people right. So one date wouldn't. If you have a neutral date, right. Go one more, a second. So that's a good question. One date yeah. wouldn't have been enough. Yeah. And I'm no expert. Let me just make this set the record straight. I'm no. <laughs> I know. I'm really. I'm young. I'm 26. But, sure. But uh, some tell me I have an old soul. But I'm very flattered by it. I, but I don't know everything, and I can see myself. I can see how my opinions change. So I understand that I'm growing. Um, I, I agree one date is not really enough, but that's why I kind of tried to drag it along to almost three hours ah. and just go to different settings and go buy food and go see if there's anything that will will change, will, you know, will change the way I feel. But I'm, I also feel like it's my personality to be able to say on a first date yes or no. I'm not the kind of person that will drag it out five dates and then say no. Uh, yeah, I do have that intuition that... that was it physical attraction or was it some opinions that she so had was, that didn't stim with yours? Right. So it was both. So it okay. was, I mean, it was two things, not both. It was two things. It was physical attraction. You know, while she was very cute, I did not feel necessarily attracted to her. And number two, um, um, the second part was that I didn't feel... I didn't feel like she would add anything to my life. And I've been out with girls that I felt that feeling. Uh-huh. So it didn't work out necessarily, but whatever. Like but I, they brought I've something had, to the table. Exactly. Like the interest, there was interest over there. And with this girl, I didn't necessarily feel that. So I was confident with my decision of not right. going out again. So, but I'm just saying the reason why my story is a story is because I'm probably one of the only Hasidish people or even Jewish people, because there aren't many that is willing to come out and just share their story. Tell people about their own personal struggles or journey or mental health or or dating process or I, you know I can tell people openly I wrote I've wrote on uh, I've written on LinkedIn stories where I say that I I just don't feel well or I don't feel it or I I'm feeling uh, you know in a bad mood good mood dark mood and these have you know these have millions of views millions of people see it so it kind of like goes viral that. Wow, this guy is doing stuff. And then, so recently, the last six months, I started my own podcast. And it right away caught up very quickly. Like, it's it's performing, I think, a lot better than any other podcast, certainly in the Jewish community. Um, Because also for the same concept, because it's very vulnerable conversations. And the people watch the podcast for the host, not for the guest. That's the big, that's the big difference, you know, because people can have podcasts, but bring up guests. And the guests are very interesting, but if the host is not doing a good job, then they don't connect. If the host is not being vulnerable, if the host is not somebody that has proper knowledge or understanding, then the entire podcast is not interesting. Right. You know, so that's that's actually what you do. You know, you're an interesting person. You bring up guests and it, it your audience loves it. It gets a lot of views. So it's that, that kind of guy. I feel like the podcasts that we have in our community, and I love all of them and I know all of them, but for them, it's two things. Number one, they're not 
sharing about themselves. They're, they're just asking questions. So it's an interview. It's not a conversation. And number two, it's very political or agenda driven. You know, so they'll bring up a politician or they'll bring up a Hasidus or a Moisdus or something that has something or, or just for the views. They'll bring up somebody that's going to get a lot of views. So I'm, I love the mission with the podcast because I love helping people. So it's right. very, very important to me. And I understand when I when I talk, when I speak, and even this podcast right now that we're recording, I'll be posting it probably. And I know that thousands, if not tens of thousands of people will listen to this right now. And I can feel the energy of every person listening. I understand that there is a, a, a kid or a little boy or a little girl at the age of 15 or 16 that has no idea what they want to do with their life. But they look up to me and they, they, they see their hero in me. They're like, wow, look, he did it. He has a company and employees. And so, Ellie, you can't thing. disappoint them now. Um, I, I, yeah, I very much try. Yeah, yeah, it is. And I, and I take it on. Yeah. I also know that there is, you know, I know that there is the older people that listen to me. They, 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 they love just seeing young energy, young talent. They feel like they, feel like they contribute. Do you think to my that success. people are enamored by you because they're, they're I don't want to use the word shocked, but they're so... Uh, taken by your ability to freely share that yeah where most people would be more like holding back right well that's a great question i i don't think that that's what people love because this is just my gift right my gift is to share to speak to help people i'm I'm okay doing it there like he's saying what i wish i could say or i wish i could be strong enough to do right Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. They see their own inner hero yeah. in me. When they watch me, they're like, you know, hold on. He he's he did his dream. I also have a dream. I also have a passion to make to bake sourdough and sell it to my block, to make uh, wigs and hair or be a dresser or be a personal shopper or create my own business or storefront or or you know, like so many ideas that I have. He did it, so I also want to do it. And that's, I don't need anybody to idolize me. I, I, I openly say I'm not, I'm not perfect. There's nothing to look up at. There's nothing, there's no, no results. As far, again, I, I love myself, but I, there's no like results that, that should make you say, wow, he is so awesome. Besides the fact that if you become awesome, then you can say, wow, I'm awesome because you became awesome because of me. So that's, that's really why I feel people connect. And I can't see my life any way different. I mean, this is you really You see what Ellie going. being Ellie. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, and and yeah. I love it. And sometimes yeah. I do watch myself as the outsider because this is a show. I openly say this is a show. This is not the real, over here. I'm talking. Everything is good. I go I go outside to my car and I'll and I'll cry if I feel alone or I feel lonely or wow. I feel like something's bothering me. And some days are good. Some days are better. Some days are worse. I mean, it's that's uh, part of life. And I try to share that as well. So you know, I'll say. Do you have people reaching out to you daily? Baruch Hashem. That's something and that. What changed. are you hearing from them? What are you hearing from Klal Yisrael? What are you hearing from the public? That's a great question because I I love addressing in my videos. I love talking yeah. direct yeah. to Klal Yisrael. I I love using that term Klal Yisrael. Yeah. Because we're all a Klal, and whatever right. I say, even if somebody's not listening, they're going to repeat what I said by the Shabbos meal. So it's like kind of it's very easy because we're so small. That's why we're so big, right? right. So. You know, if you're named Moskowitz, you automatically, I just named 100 people on, that are listening, <laughs> right? And the other 500 know somebody with right. the name, or the other 5,000 actually would know somebody with the name Moskowitz. So that's, that's how small we are, you know? So, so um, um, Kalali Surul, there is, there is uh, there, first of all, let's start with the positive. There's tremendous joy and love and chesed. Um, tremendous acceptance. That's literally, if we have to name the year 2023 or 2024, the one word would be acceptance. That's the acceptance that we have is just unbelievable. Um, Hashem has an interesting way to make that happen. Unfortunately, sometimes through yeah, and for October seventh yeah, kind of style. Yeah, did for us. Yeah, there's uh, there's always energies in the world that it's affecting yeah. that that is affecting everybody, of course. Um, the uh the, so the acceptance is, is a major i mean the, you have nobody looking i was just i was just went to the mall because i had like two hour a window of two hours sure. so i went shopping here in the king king's county it's called what's it called the king's, oh, plaza. king's plaza and every year, year that i met i just said hi and they said hi to me or That's they said beautiful. hi to me yeah like the the Agdas and shulam is just tremendous excellent on the flip side of that klali because we are so 
because we love the nice cars and the fish boards and the meat boards, we, we want a good and better quality of life. So there's many singles out there that really want to be in a relationship. And all it requires is, of course, a change within themselves, but it also requires for one, to, one another to, to, to reach out. I read a shidduch yesterday. I knew a, I, I knew a guy, I knew a girl, and I read the shidduch. And I'm going to follow up with them. Hopefully they go out. I already did three shidduchim, Beautiful. and I already read another three or four shidduchim where people went out. And I read probably, I've asked resumes from about 50 to 100 people. That alone is a case to ask. So I'm saying people need that kind of thing. Asking what Klali Sroul is feeling right now, people need that. We're, we're very much alone. There's probably 20 or 30 percent of people that are single. Yeah, right? High, that's very the, high. I deal yeah. with it regularly, the whole day. Right. So <laughs> Not simple. Exactly. Not that, simple. That's your profession. Yeah. And all that they want is a good relationship. I, I can't start telling you to how many singles I've spoken. Um, and especially the girls, because the men have one problem, which is that they they have no idea what marriage is about. The girls have have a different problem that they, their hearts get stolen and they go into a relationship and they give everything to their husband. And when I say everything, I mean everything. But they still can't appreciate it because they feel so worthless that they don't understand what just happened. Their parents never loved them. And... They have a wife now that's giving them everything, but they have an issue accepting it. So one of the journeys that I'm on is to be able to give myself what I need in terms of the kind of love that I need, the space, the time, um, healing, the kind of energy I need to be in, so that when somebody else is, else gets... Do you think there was them, anything lacking in your upbringing? Do you feel like there was some emotional vacuum for you? Um, and, now, and now you're reclaiming things? Right. That you're, 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 you're taking Ellie and right. building him up with more, bigger muscles emotionally? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm just going to close the two tabs that I opened. Number one, so Klali is right. definitely searching. No, no, it's okay. Klali right. is definitely searching and, and looking for stuff. That's number one. The second thing that I want to finish is that, that, that yes, that people, the, 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 the marriage, the, the, I... I <laughs> I actually released a podcast on this, and it got like a thousand views. And to Beautiful. me, a thousand views is a lot. Is. I mean, it is. It's little, but for a solo podcast, it's really a lot. That a thousand people listen to this, and this, the 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 name of the podcast was "We're not in a self, we're not in a shadikhan crisis. We're in a self awareness crisis." Explain. So that means that there is a push out there that there's a shadikhan crisis, right? right. And what keep what, hearing about it day and night? Exactly. What's a shadikhim crisis? That what do you mean? We have boys, we have girls. They don't have shadikhim. <laughs> your shidduch is your neighbor. I mean, there's so much shadikhim out there. There's there's thousands of possibilities. Don't say there's a shadikhim crisis. It's like saying there's a money crisis. Like, is there really a money crisis? Like, go pick up flowers in your garden and sell them at the corner. You will find somebody to buy it for five, ten bucks, and with that ten bucks, you'll be able to buy dinner. There's no money crisis. There's a money crisis when you have a lack of laziness or not knowing how to grab those flowers, right? The same thing over here. There's no shadikhim crisis. There's the, what, what, define shadikhim crisis. Shadikhim crisis is, what, what, what does a shadikhim crisis mean? You don't know how to dial the phone number of a shatchan? You don't know how to call... You know, I say, your, I say this all the time. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, okay. I say the same thing. I totally agree with you. There's no shidduch crisis. There's an attitude crisis. Right? Exactly. <laughs> That's how I see it. But you, you and I are saying the same thing. Right. So, yeah. so a, shidi yeah. a shidduchim crisis yeah. is, there is no shidduchim I'm tired crisis. of hearing that term. I don't want to hear it anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I understand because the people pushing the shidduchim crisis yeah. are total victims. They either, so many of them have their own problem or whatever. So they'll push a shidduchim crisis. What do they want out of this? This is the same person now begging for money, right? So I have a money crisis. So since I have a money crisis, hello, can you help me and give me money? Same thing with Shadikim. There's a Shadikim crisis. Hello, now let me put the responsibility in everybody to help me with a Shadikh. Why? It's Don't true. help me. I know exactly the Shadikim to call. I know exactly which friends to reach out. I know exactly where to go if I actually want to find a Shadikh. I can go to... I can go to a networking event. Again, this is a little bit more controversial because not everybody is going to ask but out a girl. All, That's okay. All types of but there's all types of alternatives. If you're if you're exactly. the most from kind of person, call a shot and get a bishow. There you go. Go on a bishow. I know I know there's a lot of Bukharam that listen to this. They're 18, 19, 20. They're desperate for a shadr. 
call a shatchan. Have you called a shatchan? The Satmar that ever said, you should call a shatchan once a week. Have you done that? I guarantee you there's no book that's done it. And if somebody did it, did it then kala kavad, then I congratulate you. I'm sorry that you have to wait. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to validate. I always kind of tell people. people, I give you permission to bug me all the time. I need you to. Right. Because... So you're also a shatchan, right? Yes. Besides being a shadikh. Sure, coach. right. Sure, sure. I tell them, listen, it's a, it's a demand and supply. I ha- I'll forget about you. Right. Because everyone wants help. So... You must show it to help yourself. Right. Exactly. Like you say, Ellie. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that I have a rabbi slash doctor that agrees with me. <laughs> what, does the, what does rabbi understand? What does doctor? like? Doctor the doctor is, started as a foot surgeon. This so is you? This is me years I'm ago. i this handsome yeah. guy and I'm like, who is this? Wow. And that doctor was a Talmud of a Gadol Hador when he was 12 years old by the name of Victor Miller. That's him with me. Wow. See that? He was my rabbi since I was 12 years old. I Rabbi was born Victor? in Cairo, Egypt. Wow. My father's family came from uh, Yerushalayim, Syria, Yerushalayim. Yeah. My mother's family was Ashkenaz from Odessa, Ukraine, running away from the communist revolution. He went to Cairo. Right. Can I tell you what I learned from Rabbi Victor? Something that I implemented yeah. in my life every day? So he taught me a lot, all what I know about dating. Now everything makes sense, yeah. by the way. He's yeah. such an inspiration. Um, yeah. he, he taught me, they, he was at the dentist, I think, when he was like 90 years old. And they told him, your teeth are just perfect. How did you do it? You ever heard the story? No. And he said, every morning when I wake up, I just thank God. I thank Hashem for my perfect, beautiful teeth. So there's no way with that kind of energy that my teeth will be rotten wow. or anything. It's amazing. So I kind of adopted that. And I was at the dentist. He used to tell us to brush with salt water. Uh, yeah. He was brilliant in everything. Yeah. So yeah. I, I kind of adopted that, and yeah. I was recently at the dentist after not being for two years. I mean, I go for my yearly checkup, but I, right. it's been many years since I've had any, any dental problem, and I eat quite a lot. So, uh, so I enjoy. Thank you, Rebel Victor. But it's just amazing. And I thank for, for my entire body, for everything, for yes. my hair and my skin and my blood and everything that's amazing. And I've been extremely healthy, Baruch Hashem. Um, to, back to the emotional, you asked a question about how do I feel like they missed a need? Well, of course they missed a need. There is no question, no question about it that many of us miss something when we grow up. And that results into somebody feeling not worthy of something. The biggest problem is not feeling worthy of love. Ah. And they, then, therefore, when somebody loves them, they have an issue with that. By the way, the spark that we talk about in dating is, is not a spark. It's a familiar familiarity. Did I say it right? You're correct. Um, that is that is that we feel. So when you go out and you meet a girl and she's your mother, she's exactly like your mother. Or you meet a boy and he's exactly like your father. There is a spark. Yay! Let's get engaged. That's not the spark. It's very very far from the spark, because when a, when you meet a guy or a girl that's really really meant for you, you will not feel any spark. You will just feel at ease, yeah. at peace. Comfortable. Exactly. Yourself. Right. But that having to be someone else. Correct. Or play that role. So the spark that we're looking for in most, ter- in most incidents are, are, are wrong. And the audience can test this. See for yourself how your wife matches your mother and see for yourself how your husband matches your father. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> it's really crazy. Yeah. Every, by the way, on a subconscious level, guys, like this is not, there's not something you can prevent. Like on you, of course you didn't, you don't know, everybody says, no, I'm not going to marry somebody like my mother, right? You kind of like, even for the joke, you say it like, no, I don't want to do it. But subconsciously, your mind is searching because your first feminine energy was your mother. And for a girl, their first uh, masculine energy was their father. So subconsciously, they're looking for that kind of guy. Mm -hmm. So if their father was emotionally not available then they're looking for a guy that's not emotionally they're going to look for, somebody that's, uh, that's not going to be home at night, something like that, like, because their father was never home. And this is subconsciously, meaning like you're, you're, you just attracted that. You went out with seven boys, but the seventh guy matched your father, so you just felt the spark. Yeah, this guy must be for me. Why? Because he's not home and available for me. Interesting. There's a problem that I see today called TMC, too much choice. Okay. Especially it's... It's, it's, it's motivated by having all our devices. Yes. So I tell people, 
you can open up your phone and within a matter of minutes look at hundreds and hundreds of people. Yeah. And I think that's a huge weapon of the Eight Sahara to distract people today and um, bump them off their lane in terms of what they should be looking for. And I like to always share a story that they did an um, experiment in a supermarket called Whole Foods. They put down two tables of jellies. One had six, one had 30. You get a coupon off if you buy, and you're allowed to taste anything for free. So the table that had 30 got 70% tasters versus the one that had six only had 20. When it came to buying, 50% bought at the six and 3% bought at the 30. Wow. People don't like too much choice. It confuses them. I agree. Isn't that amazing? Yes. So a person today needs to remain focused and have an idea, whether it's a top five list or top seven list, whatever it is, what is it that I need to make me happy? And especially, don't lose yourself with wants versus needs. Wants being very gosh me very gosh me. Needs, the kind of person that's going to bring out, like you said, the best in me and help me to be the best version of me. Because Rick DeMillo always told us something that I think is excellent, and you demonstrate that. You're in this world to perform for Hashem. Thank you. And who will help me perform my best? That's your soulmate. Right. The person that's going to bring out your talents and nurture them and support you. Right. Thank you. I really thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. And what you said is really beautiful. And I absolutely agree. And what was coming to mind as I was listening to that, because I was saying, I was thinking to myself, yes, I, I know that I have a lot of options and choices. But I also, I always say, I don't even know if that's true, by the way. I just added, I don't know if the real is on a makaras but something it says in the Mishnah, something about, something is great about somebody that recognizes their place. And it's certainly a step in the right direction. <laughs> yes. And for me, that yeah. step is. Yeah. I'm very aware and I very much know if I feel ready or not. Um, and I'll admit to that kind of readiness. Um, or sometimes I'll date when I don't feel ready, but having a knowing of the fact that I'm not completely ready and saying, okay, let somebody come potentially into my life to add that whatever it is that they can add and bring value to, so that I am more ready. So my point is that, yes, choice can be a problem, but I, a bigger problem is, like you said, if you don't know what you're choosing, mm -hmm. like what are your choices? So clearly creating a, a, a list, a little bit of what you want will help. Writing down the kind of life that you want to have, writing down the kind of qualities that one wants to see in their marriage. I know for me, I, I can list some of them just so that people get an understanding. Like, I know for myself that to be um, clean and organized is super important. And I feel like it's the little things that will determine the big picture of my marriage and relationship. But it, indeed, there's a lot of MS to that. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So I know, for example, that that cleanness and organization is important because I can love you to the end of the world. But if, if our house is dirty all the time and I can't have my mental straight, my mental health straight because... Because an unorganized space will make you not feel so good, then we have a problem. Of course, it can be worked on. So it's not like, you know, if maybe if I find everything in a special person and she has this one issue, then I would look away. I wouldn't try to change her exactly. But I'm saying to me, this cleanness is a very important thing. To me, to me eating healthy is a very important thing. Of course, I can also eat unhealthy and some stuff like that, 80 20, you know, try to keep it mostly. But, uh, but if you're not somebody that eats healthy, then how, how am I supposed to protect you, support you, um, love you when this is such a deep core value? So some might say, wow, you know, you're really getting into the details. You're so far away from the rachnias of what life is really about. But then it's really these little details that build up a perfect image of what I feel I deserve so that I can say when I meet that special person that, okay, wow, you match those things on my list that I really want. And it's not a, st a strict list, but it's just a kind of image and idea of this kind of person I do want, that kind of person. I, I, I always thought like when we talk about we all have a soulmate and we all have 
a boom yam koidni tira sa vlad bas plani plani i i once thought that it's like literally there is a person in a specific place that's mine and and we will meet it's not exactly that way of course it is but it's you that you have to find you have to yeah. find that person right you have to and we know that we can have multiple soulmates sure. and have multiples of you sure. so you do you how clear are you on what's important to you we're not my list is not what's did you hear me say anything in my list about her no what's important to me i don't care what you you can do whatever you want but for me these things are important i have my image my view my perspective what do you think about that do you think i have it figured out or not so much seems like you have an idea you you thought about it that's for sure you seem to have some degree of clarity as to what you want you're not imposing that on someone else you know yeah. and what i like about you is you're other centered mm-hmm. and that's very important in marriage you understand it's i always tell people Chaim Kenevsky used to say something fantastic your greatness is devo- is defined by the torah by your ani well wow. if your ani is you alone you could be a billionaire but you're very small from our perspective as a wow. as a as a ben tyra as you care for more people as your ani grows from the torah's perspective you become a greater and greater and greater and greater wow i got to share an amazing story with you yeah please cuz i'm during parshas chayesar they run sometimes polls they'll ask influencers in dating what do you think is the greatest and most important me to look for so they asked me this past year and i said i didn't have to think i said avatra someone was willing to give of themselves yeah i was in miami a month ago and took my wife on a little vacation my favorite city i used to live there six years so anyway i read a story it was absolutely amazing they locked up there was a guy you know a land owner in in, in poland they locked up a guy because he had an in on his property and he fell behind 300 rubles Erev Yom Kippur, he takes him and his wife and his kids and he throws them into a dungeon and he tells the Jewish community, I don't care, he can rot and die in there. There was a Hasidic guy who really took it to heart and he wanted to help to try to collect. So he yeah. went out collecting, all he made was three, 30 rubles, really off. So he doesn't know what to do and Yom Kippur is tonight. So he finds out that there's a gambling hall in town where there's a lot of yidin there, they're gambling, they're drinking vodka, They're not so they're not so from whatever and they don't care about Yom Kippur tonight. They'll show up or they'll show up or never show up. So he walks in there and there's tables and people playing, lots of money. He sees money on the tables and vodka and they're drinking and they're gambling. He walks up to one table and he says, he tells them the story, a heartbreaking story, a person and his wife and his children are stuck in this dungeon. It doesn't bother them. Then suddenly one of the guys says, "You know what? His vodka is 100 190 proof." Drink wow. this and I'm going to give you 100 rubles. Wow. So he eight ounce cup. Yeah. He drinks it. And he's like he's now he's about to he's like he's shaking back and forth and he gets the 100 rubles. But he's still 100 uh, close to 200 short. Right. He goes to another table and they saw what happened. So they pulled the same stunt on him. And he drinks the whole eight ounce of vodka. Again, the 190 proof. This is yeah. six cup. He's about to collapse at this point but he's like he's he wants that other hundred. Yeah. So he goes to the third table and does the same thing again. And he drinks another 8 ounce cup. And then he tells them I, I do me a favor. I can't even walk. Just carry me to the to the the land, that landlord, that baron, noble, whatever. He gets there, he knocks on the door and barely able to stand up, he gives him the 300 rubles and he releases The man releases from the dungeon the yid and his wife and his kids. Now it's almost time for Kal Nidre and he says take me to shul. So they take him to shul but he's flat out. He gave up his Yom Kippur for this yeah. to help another yid. Yeah. So they so they um they lay him down and they're starting to open the Aron Kodesh to bring out Kal Nidre. And Rabbi Yitzhak Berdichev is there as a rav there. So he gets up and he sees the Sefer Torah coming out and he starts singing Torah Sashar to Mima and he said that drunk guy get him out of here throw him out but believe it like says no you don't understand because he thought it was Simcha Torah he saw yeah, the Sefer Torah right. he goes you don't understand you and I and all of us have to worry about tonight 
with Yom Kippur because our lives are still all hanging on the balance. He just yes. flew right over and he's at Tzibcha Star already. He doesn't even need Yom Kippur. That's what it means to care about other people. Other people. He's good. He's done. He's sealed. Wow. You and I have to worry. Wow. He doesn't have to worry. He's already in, in Sukkot Star already. Yeah, this reminds me of the common joke. I love the story. Thank yeah. you. It reminds me of the common joke where people say, Alof Srikas, that I want to lay down and wake up Matzah Sukkot Star. You ever heard that? So, yeah. Yeah, I, lo I just love that. Very nice. I'm curious from your perspective, what do you think is the biggest thing that people are lacking for boys and girls? Like, what's the biggest mistake that a boy is making when he's looking for a Shidduch, for a Zivik? Hadracha. God, how, to, how, to, how to date properly, what to look for in a person. Wow. You understand? Yep. More than ever, I, I see a big need for they that. They have no idea what they're yeah. doing. How Hadracha, they're what out, do I need what for? to look for? Right, exactly. Um, personality that stims with mine. Um, someone, a, a, a good family that I can visit yeah. once in a while. Someone who has good midos. I tell the girls, for example, there are three things to watch in a guy. Kaas, kamtsan, kaptan. Shalom Arush told The three this. Ks. Yeah. yeah, the three, yeah. yeah. Kamtsan, Kabdan, you said, yeah. and the other was... Kamtsan, Kabdan, Kasan. Kasan, yeah. right. Shalom Arush taught me this, and this is something I teach I love it, by the way, I agree. Because yeah. Kas is definitely, yeah. I'm grateful that I don't have that middle. And Kamtsan, generous. I agree, generous. You, you got to be a giver. Right. I, I love how you said it, because a Kamtsan means that they're not generous about life. They're not a giver. They're not in a giving energy. And Kabdan means like they when they can't change, when they're so rigid, basically, they call it. Right. So automatically, if your wife says something, Harsh your spouse person. Is, yeah, Harsh. like you're, no, this doesn't work for me. No, I'm yeah. never going to do this. You know, right. the, those type of personalities. I always say I work on it right now so that when I become, I don't know, like I'm 100 years old, I'm like, Iranic, like, uh, you know, grandpa, we're going to the moon for Yantav. I should be like, yeah, no problem. You know, like, I don't want to be that kind of person that's like, no, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm staying here. You know, that rigidness. I, I love that. It's very a very important. good concept. I also try to explain to them that we're living in a very... Uh, times are very interesting, especially people are tested in their Yiddishkeit. Yeah. I, I say to them, and I believe this wholeheartedly, marriage is a spiritual path. Well, wow. Look for someone who's lit up, not right. cold, right. with a fire. That, there's a spark of, of idealism. Right. Well, well clearly... In, I don't know if you if you're into these kind of concepts, but for me, everything that every kind of shidduch that came was attracted by a certain specific energy and place that right. I was in my life. So that's why it's so important to to know who you are before you go out there and date. I also agree that it's you can't really love yourself. Some people say you have to love yourself, then you can find somebody else to, that's going to love you. It's not really true. You actually have to find somebody else that shows you how you can be loved. So now you can love yourself for that kind of person. You know, like people always say to people, I wish you can see yourself the way I see you. That's a very true statement. So yes, of course, I can work on my self-love. But I'm not, I'm not always going to know how to exactly love myself until, until another person comes in and tells me how lovable I am. It tells me what they're seeing. There's only a certain amount of things that you can see about yourself. Um, and then the rest you can't really see. So that's why, that's why it's an Isaac anecdote, because you're getting a perspective that, that uh, is really unseen, is really like you're going to get a reflection of yourself. And by the way, that's why so many marriages go wrong, because they get married and they start seeing things about themselves. Wow, am I really that kind of, am I just really that bad? Am I really that kind of that Kassen or that Kamsen or that no. Kavdan, like all these things, you start finding out stuff about yourself because she's the reflection. He's the reflection. Everything that you're doing, they're sitting there to show you. They're holding up a mirror to your face the entire day. The good news is that if you're a nice guy, you're also going to see that. Like, I don't know how nice I am until I live with somebody in a house 24-7. Absolutely. And they tell me, you know, Ellie, you're such a nice person. You know, you're in a good mood when you wake up. You're excited about your day when you go to sleep. During the day, the midday crash, you handle it so well. The, 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 the weekend, you handle it so well. The Sundays, you spend it so nicely. But you, you're touching on a very good point here. And that is finding a partner who is generous in compliments. Yeah. That's so that important. That too, yeah. 
so important because they bring out the best in us. Yeah, no, people love that. Rick Demille was talking about that in Torres of Rigda last week. People hollish for that. He goes, even I, my wife, I'm going to finish my share. I'm going to go upstairs. I wanted to ask me. I heard, I heard you had a great share. Yeah. People like that. So if she's pressing the right buttons for Ellie, right, she's going to help Ellie like a rocket soar. Right. Yeah. Right, and that, and this is what I learned from uh, uh, Manas because I was always concerned. Like I was, when I was dating, I kind of I was putting up an act. I used to like because, but then he taught me this concept. Like just be you. You want her to love you for, for you. You you or better. You want her to work. Like the only thing that matters is if you like her. Right. If she's appealing to you. So you be you. Don't act. Don't pretend. Go on a date. Be real. One of the things that I do, I have this argument with my friend. Um, we like we always talk about like um, if 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 the guy should set a place to Is go. Is he a single or guy, or married guy? Uh, he's dating. Actually. Okay. So so, what, so yeah, but he does have good experience. Our conversation is very simple. Do should we should you, should the guy set up a date or not? I when I usually go on a date, I. I have a few ideas where I want to go, but I just, I just chill. I just, let's go wherever you want to go. Um, and for him, it's very, very calculated. He knows exactly where he's going to go, what he's going to do on the date, and um, or certain specific ways of how he's going to test his his date. <laughs> that's very in- that's, That I found very interesting because <laughs> actually the girl he's dating knows about these tests and she finds it fascinating. That yeah. That kind of shows that when... When you have somebody special dating, it's just, it's pretty cool. But I'm saying, like, he, that's, it's, it's just interesting. I, I feel like I'm more of a flow kind of person um, rather than being. Um, to be honest, and yeah. speaking to thousands of people, there's no real right way. It's what hits, like, you, you're, a, you're an energy person. If that's what is Zorim, if that's what flows right. for you, yeah. fine. He exactly. likes it more structured. Exactly. Right. Uh, right. You know, fantastic. Right. Whatever you know. Different right. strokes for different folks. Right. Yeah. I, I. Yeah. Thank you. I. I. That's that's beautiful. What you said. I. I and I. And I see my life that way. Yeah. Of course, I. Sh- I try to structure things in advance. Like the fact that we met was scheduled over a week ago. I think, two weeks ago about. But I'm just saying, like, so I can schedule in advance. But I also love to be a kind of a last minute kind of guy. I heard this from Donald Trump too. He keeps always keeps the schedule empty. So that anything can still happen, you know. Right. He can anytime go somewhere, and he says that he does that intentionally. So, so yeah, I am kind of a flow kind of person. But I'm actually I'm very excited for where regards from Rabbi Ezra Max, by the way. Great guy, great guy. Yeah. Um, regards from him. I I had this conversation with him. We talk a lot, and I was telling him that I. The, the space that I am right now, the energy that I am, my dating energy is very, is a very, very interesting energy. You know, from one part, I don't want to, I don't want to get married. I don't, I don't, I don't need to get married, I feel. And I feel like it's rather a want. I feel like it went from a need to a want. Most people, especially the expression in, in the Yiddish world, in the Hasidish world is, er dar or ich dar Everything is, I, I need, I need, I need, I need. And it also goes with what, what Rabbi Manas, his number one famous thing is like, you're, you're, you're not needy, you're needed. You know what I'm saying? So the moment you need a shidduch, you need, you need, you need, you're putting yourself in the opposite energy completely. Right, right. You know, all you, or you will attract somebody that's in that kind of energy because shidduchim still happen for bad people or for people that are not exactly completely it's working. You're not, you're not seen in the most positive way. Yeah. I know people like that as clients. And they press too hard. Right. Yeah. So I think so. I think self awareness yeah. is the most beautiful thing about a man that he can do. And Baruch Hashem, most women, most girls already have that. They they are born with that bina yasaida. You know, yeah. they have they they have the self awareness, and they're also a lot more in their bodies. They are, they they go by feelings, not by thoughts. Okay. Men are like logical and ethical, and they they are stuck in their head. A woman is is created so that she is in her body. She, they are a lot more smarter. They're a lot more caring. They will express their emotions too. They, they'll, 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 they'll cry easier. They'll feel easier. They'll be open about telling you if I'm in a good mood or in a bad mood. For men, it's uh, it's very difficult to break that 
that that shell so i'm just i just feel like my energy now when it comes to dating is just very it's a very interesting energy of kind of accepting myself exactly for who i am knowing my insecurities my problems i was speaking this morning to my therapist i was saying like i don't know if i want to live alone in a house like who says i want to live alone i know I, I don't live alone like am i gonna have to do my own laundry well i did my own I can't laundry see you living alone ellie so- <laughs> Human beings are social animals, and you're very social. Right. So, and, and you have too much to give to the world. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. No, but I was, I was saying it hypothetically. I mean, I was obviously, yeah. I was, in, I was in dorm for many, many years. I wasn't, I wasn't home. I, sure. Of course, I did my own laundry and cooked for myself and shopped for myself. I still do. I shop my own clothing. I buy my own food. I make myself breakfast and lunch every day. And uh, I, I, I took a solo trip a few months ago. Like I can. I feel like I could be potentially alone, but it was like kind of a blockage. And, you know, she asked me, so who are the people that, that are now caring for you in, in, in your life? It's a good question. And I started saying, okay, so look, my father takes out the garbage and my mother makes dinner and, and so on, so on, so on. So the exercise was, well, can I, well, of course there is a blockage there because getting married means that I, I am... I am the giver, as you always say, right? I am the one now taking care, taking responsibility, taking be, yeah. care of her. When yeah. she has the flat tire, who's she calling me? And I have to show up there. Sure. So it's putting myself into that energy. And I ask myself, well, can I do this? And the answer is, of course I can. Of course. I just have to open up new pathways in my own brain and say that, yes, I, I want to be this kind of, of person. So it opened up for me a new door. Yes, I want to have. You don't I want to have my. Ellie? No, 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 not no. at all. Oh, well, I have a lot of fear sometimes, but but I'm saying. Do you fear the, the potential of sharing your life with someone or the responsibilities? Does that does that seem overwhelming to you sometimes? Yes. Uh huh. Do you fear but, losing your freedom? Because you've no. gotten used to, you know, do what I want when I want. No one to tell me really when, when, and if. Um, no rules I don't, or regulations. I don't fear it, but the way you say it, I'm actually thinking that, no, I, I wouldn't want somebody to take away my space. But I think that I would make to her very clear. I had this argument with my mother. I take a walk every night. I walk three miles. Beautiful. And yeah, and she's like, you know, Ellie, when you get married... In spite of this or yeah, exercise? Uh, both, by Excellent. the way. I walk three miles. I go to the gym I, every day. Yeah, but and I, I do the I, same I, thing to I land out show every nice. morning, half hour in every direction. Exactly. Very nice. Yeah, I, I do as well as this also every Excellent. night to speak to Hashem. It's beautiful. But she told me like, you know, when you get married, you can't do that. You can't walk out of the house and take a walk for an hour. And I was like, oh, um, well, I can do that. And I will tell her that you I'm taking to inform that. her. Correct. And I said also, look, I would be also open to going to going every second night with her on the walk. I'm okay with that. But sometimes I need my walk alone to yes. recharge, to be a better person for her. Right. So no, I don't. Exa- I don't really fear it, and especially as I said, I feel like now I'm. I'm trying. I'm, I am working on being okay with it, being very. Open. But I'm saying, what, uh, the reason I'm saying it is because some people might look at me like I'm a shigginer, like, like where well, you can't live alone. The answer is, for most of us, we don't even address this these kind of problems, these kind of insecurities, and then one day you find yourself yes living in an apartment. But you're freaking out because you had some some area of you had that issue a while ago, but you never addressed it. Yes. So find whatever blockage it is that you have, because as I said, there is hundreds or thousands of couples right now where you have. I'm talking about this one case scenario. Because this is my own study. I, I have this thing. I talk every day to one person that I never met in the past. And this is something that I discovered. Hundreds of single women got married to, to guys that have no way of appreciating what they do for them. Really? Yes. So you talk about Shadikim crisis? No, 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 no. That's a problem. This is a crisis. And it, by the way, I, I'm, a, I'm a guy. I'm very, I'll be very happy to protect the men. I know some women out there weren't right for you, whatever. There's, there's answers for everybody. This is not a general topic. What I'm, think, this, I'm saying this is one specific area of women that were that are such nice people but they tried and tried and tried and this guy was just cold stone he he couldn't take anything from her one woman told me like she was 
preparing dinners for him every night, he would come home and he would make dinner because he needed that kind of leadership. He needed like, look, I'm making dinner. And you know, it's, yeah, it's very hurtful. And and these women, like still, some of them still pray for their for their ex every day. Like th that's how caring and loving wow. they are and were. Amazing. But this guy just had no no ability to appreciate and accept these things. By noticing these things, for example, I mentioned for me one insecurity that perhaps living alone can be a challenge that I'm that I'm working on to accept and understand that yes, I could I could live alone and be the the, the caretaker of a of a home, but if every man and every woman can identify what's for them the blockage before getting married or engaged, like what's what is my insecurity? What is what what what, what did my father or my mother tell me all the years that perhaps is possibly not so true and now I'm going to get into a relationship with a guy with a girl in, in a marriage and 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 still live that kind of pattern like I had I, I knew someone a friend of mine that whenever I was trying to and he worked on this whenever I was trying to give him something or help him or just give him food whatever kind of thing he would always resist it he was always like I, I can do it on my own I can I can take it's it on my problem. own and he, he, this, this. You need to learn how to accept the yeah, gift. Exactly. And this Rick guy. taught us all the time. Right. So this friend is very self-aware and he yeah. worked on it. And now, and now that changed. Like if I, if I were to offer him something, he would be, yeah, sure. Thank you. Like, but, but this, you understand what I'm saying? Like everybody has these little things in their life that they're resisting and resenting and not being able to accept. And the moment that they, Notice these things. All you have to do is notice. I'm not talking about here a life-changing situation. You don't have to go through a surgery to change this. This is just noticing a certain what goes on. You make an excellent point. Something that I teach often okay. is that if you have an emotional, psychological problem, take responsibility and fix it now. People think that by getting married, it'll just go away. So yeah. I often say this, Ellie. Marriage won't fix your problems. Marriage will make them worse. Yeah, yeah. Because it magnifies it now under a microscope since you're under the same roof. Yeah. So you make a very valid point. Whatever it is, and every one of us has something that we need to, uh, you know, Rubik's Cube that needs to be fixed a little bit. We need to play with that combination. Um, whatever it may be, is it your selfishness? Is it like, for example, lack of appreciation? Whatever it may be, take responsibility because you're going to have a much better marriage otherwise. By, tell, by sing, sending your problems into the future, thinking that marriage is going to make them go away is a huge mistake. Wow. wow. Huge mistake. Right. Yeah. Right. Marriage so only good. makes it worse because now there's no way, to play, no way to hide. Right. They see the real you. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and it's also, I feel like it's a sense of unknown. So we have to be, most people are afraid of the unknown. Yeah. So marriage is kind of unknown. I don't know how it's going to make me feel. I don't know how I'm going to enjoy it. I don't know the ups and downs that it brings. Well, one of the keys, again, I'm not here to flatter you, but one of the keys to a great relationship is that magic word vulnerability. Wow. Most guys can't be vulnerable. It's yeah. uncomfortable for them. It eats away at their masculinity. I totally agree. Yeah. And and the and vulnerability is the difference between success and failure. Right. Yeah, that's the one thing I heard when I date that uh, they would tell me like, "Wow, your vulnerability is on a is yeah. on a next level." Um, yeah, it's a I, big mile. It is a thank you. Yeah, I, I I agree with what you said. Like men are very closed off. Most men will never cry and right. And it's it's very difficult for a woman to be with such a man. People don't understand because they're the emotional and they want to be included so, in your life. Exactly. So if if they can break you, if you can be, if a man can be emotional, the woman feels like, look, he's so open, he's so raw, he's so real, and it it makes them melt towards you. Like it's like it, you're giving them space, validation, whatever. A lot of things. <laughs> People don't realize the potential of how a wife can help you. Exactly. But they can only help you if you're... If you open up to them. If you open up to them. If yeah. you're vulnerable, if you're... Uh, yeah. Wow. Let me ask you a question, Ellie. I just asked someone this question who I'm trying to help, and I thought maybe you want to tackle it. How do you think your, your relationship with Hashem has changed over the years? 
Um, the scary part is you're the third person today that asked me <laughs> how my relationship... I didn't play it with them. <laughs> yeah, you're the third person today that asked me how's your relationship with Hashem. Yeah. And at this point, I'm going to take it as a very... I said, I have no idea. I talk to him, he doesn't talk to me. But I think <laughs> the fact that I got asked three times in one day, yeah, how's my relationship with Hashem... I think it means, I think that that's a very clear message from him. I think that yeah. that's him talking. Um, and I'm going to say this. I think it's a little bit weird, but the relationship has been very much, I feel like it's been a giving and not receiving. And that's maybe why the relationship is not so well. Because... If I receive, then I put him into his position, which is to be a giver. But I feel like it's only been a one way. I've I've done, I've spoken to him, I daven, I learn, and but I'm not always seeing what he's giving to me. So I'm not val this is literally like that woman that will serve you and prepare for you and take care of you, but you're not willing but to. But Ellie, take you it. opened up tonight's show and told us about all the success you're having. Correct. So where's that coming from? Uh, some well, random computer so exactly <laughs> exactly so gotta open the so, eyes yeah so i'm, I'm doing this better album but i'm also going to work on a, on a system where yeah, i can yeah. notice the the things that he does for me every single day and strengthen that relationship Excellent. by by thanking him by allowing him to give me things that's how i'm going to strengthen this this relationship by Hashem. So yeah, that's that's kind of my journey with the relationship. Terrific. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. Wow. How are we doing on time? Wow. Okay, very good. Um anything else we wanna chat on? You you haven't spoke you haven't said much about yourself. I mean You wanna tell oh for sure. I would love to hear about you if you wanna share. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Um how did I get into this? Yeah, like I said, I was I, I trained as a doctor, and um, I got a lot of uh, training and direction from Rick De Miller over the years wow. in understanding people and their needs, and he played a critical role in pushing me to being a teacher in, in Yeshiva Gedolas in the morning. Right. Many of the boys coming home from Eretz Yisrael who came to my shurim on Chumash, Mishnah, Gemara, and asked me questions about the girls they were dating after yeah. school. I didn't have a clue. So I said, I better start learning. This is 25 plus years ago. And little by little, I, I started learning about the subject that fascinated me. Um, and then I found myself under numerous chuppas. Wow. Yeah. Wow. For, for them. And, I, and then I moved to Miami after Ravik Dimula passed away. And I taught University of Miami for Eshatoro Sameach every week. I came in my scrubs and I taught people who knew nothing about Yiddishkeit. Wow. Nothing. That's so, that's so I satisfying. Said, I, I, yeah, very satisfying. I prepared my shurim in between surgeries. Yeah. I ran in there to the university campus. On a Shabbos night, the door was open to people to come. So we used to have between four to ten guests a week. These are college kids. Right. And... Um, I got more, more and more experience with it. Then came a very interesting time. I had thought that I was going to just live the rest of my life in Miami. I had, I, I had my practice in the middle of the day, and I taught in a different sh city every night. So Monday night, I taught, I taught Chumash to Bukharian Jews. Tuesday night, I taught wow. Halakha to Persian Jews. Wednesday night, I taught uh, at the university. And Thursday night, I taught Mishnahis at at the um, base Kiristir, right. from my gross. Wow. Who was great grandson of Rabbi Shaila. Wow. From the so gross problem. That's yeah. why you're a rabbi. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then so I ran the Avos Suvanim for two shuls on Shabbos. Wow. Yeah. That was always my big forte. And how many Shadikim did you, when did you start making Shadikim? So I'll tell you what happened. Then I, um, little by, a little bit in Miami, of, uh, people who met at my Shurim, but then. I had to make a decision. I saw my children were not exactly fitting into that society. Mm -hmm. I had a very close Kesha to the Tasha Rebbe. Yeah. I said to him, something doesn't make sense. I own a house in Brooklyn, which I want to sell. I bought a house in Miami, and two and a half years, they're not giving me permission to put a, a nail in the wall. Because yeah. why do you need six bedrooms? Yeah. Because I wanted to help 
people who are, for example, collecting for stalkers, they had nowhere to go. Yeah. They came to Miami, they collected, and they gave the money back to the hotel. Wow. So it wasn't fair. Right. So anyway, nothing was moving. And he says to me, Rav Yaakov, it's over. You were sent to Miami on a mission, Yadit Tikkun, that was your mission, to help Claudia Yisrael. You taught, you gained, you, you, you do all this. It's time for you to come back to New York. That's why your house hasn't sold. Wow. So I came back and I didn't go back into practice right away. I continued my work and I used to have a, a shear years ago called Wednesday Night Dating with Dr. Jack in a yeshiva called Ruach HaTorah, which is a guy's from about 20 to say 25. And every Wednesday night they would get dinner and I, and I, wasn't, I was creating his own, my own shurim, researching the secular part, the, the from the religious part, wow. and putting it together. And they'd sit back, and instead of having Gemara Shir, they would have me. Yeah. One night, one of my friends, Maimel Albaz, who's on Torah, and he's a very big market share for kids, came with a camera and put it up. And within two days, I'm getting emails from all over the world. People's relationships, and they have questions. Yeah. What should I do? Wow. Someone from California, someone from Hong Kong, someone from... I, every I, I, Uganda, I'm getting calls from yeah. Nigeria. You name it, um, down south, Chile, Argentina, and so I didn't have an issue attacking those questions. It seemed like Hashem it came sort of naturally. Yeah. Also along the way, I spent many years in Uman with Rav Shalom Arush, many wow. years, and I, I sort of once Rav the Miller passed away, I had an emptiness in my life, and then I was at the Koisel, and someone gives me the Garden of Imuna. I was fascinated by this book, mm-hmm. and ultimately, I was the first one to bring him into America. Really? 2007. Wow. I brought him here, and I yeah. exposed him to the United States, because right. I found him to be very similar to Victor Miller. The only difference is, like, I'll tell you what Hasidus brought me. When I came to Uman for the first time, I saw something that was fascinating. Erev Rosh Hashanah, growing up Sephardic slash Litvish, yeah. you were petrified of Rosh Hashanah. Wow. And here I am on the... On, on, <laughs> Everybody's on the, dead. And they're dancing five, <laughs> 10 minutes before. We're thinking that our lives are on the line. And I said, these people have it right. That's 100%. the way to approach Yiddishkeit. 100%. That's the way. You understand? Wow. That changed me forever. Wow. In my whole So when did you start doing Shadikh? Um, I guess once you had an audience and a following? Mm-hmm. Or? Yeah, about uh, 12 years ago. And how many shadikhim have you made? The price? I tell you, I tell people I made about say thirty. Wow! But 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 how many did I facilitate through my showroom? Oh, exactly. Over a couple of thousand. One hundred percent. Because I get emails all the time. Wow! Thank you. Curious what you think for me because I'm I'm looking to date right now, mm-hmm. and I'm curious what you think. What type of person I have to be, or what type of person would be good for me in terms of who I date to poten- potentially get married to. Okay, so like I was, I was about to say, uh, I think you need a great listener yeah. who's authentic and real. Wow. And someone who is genuine. There's a lot of plastic today. Wow. And you are an individual who has no problem exposing his inner core. Right. Toko Kavaro. Is that good or yeah. bad? Or sometimes I ask myself the fact that I have all these followers, which of course I have my healthy boundaries in place. Yeah. But um, do you think that that's something that girls would have an issue with? Or I don't the, think the so, as long as you never deprive them of the attention that they need. Right. Let me explain something to you. Yeah. I, want, I often, so one, one, one year, when I was still a podiatrist, I, was, I had invented a line of art supports that I wanted to sell to the retail trade, like Walgreens. Yeah. And the buyer says to me, uh, we're in the middle of cons- a com- you know, conversation about the product line, where are you in the morning? I say, I teach young men in a Jewish institute, like a yeshiva, I explained to him. He's an Irish guy from Chicago. He says, what do you teach them? So I said, Mr. McGabe, I'm going to teach you your first two words in Hebrew. Treat your wives like makom vishon. First place. You understand? Yeah. So I don't think they will have a problem with you or what you do as long right. as you never deviate from that makom rishon mentality. Wow. If she feels like she's first place, she'll let you do what you need to do. Right. What gives you that joy. Once your life starts to revolve too much around Ellie, mm-hmm. you have a problem. Yeah. Because now she's shut out. Yeah. And that's a problem. Right. So what would I do if I was you? Look for an authentic, real girl. Look for idealism. It's very important for someone who wants wonderful children. And Torah should be part of that. It's critical. This is who we are as Jews. Right. 
You know, someone who looks up to Gedolim, someone who cares about having great children. You should need to have these discussions with them. Where do you, how do you want to raise the kids? Would you do it differently than your parents? How do you feel about discipline? What yeshiva system do you want to send them to? You wow. need to get into this stuff. Right. You understand? How do you feel if someone embarrassed you in public? Would you stech them back in the restaurant? Right. How would you do that? Now you're getting into their kishkas. Look for midos. Physical attraction, remember, just ignites the fire, but it only lasts a match for five seconds. Yeah. Midos is what's going to carry that relationship for years. Right. So it, 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 I'll give you an example. Watch this. I still am involved in my, in my life as if in, in medicine, so I, I needed an attorney. And I called the New York State Medical Society, and they said to me, I said, who do you use? She, she says to me, a guy in Buffalo. So I call him up. His name is Matthew Feldman. He's a fry guy, totally not like, anyway, and he knows that I'm from and whatever. So he says to me, he says, I got to tell you a story. I had to fly on JetBlue from Buffalo to Manhattan for a hearing in the Department of Health. And I, it went well. Now it's time to go back to JFK, to JetBlue's terminal, and go home, fly back to Buffalo. He goes to the, the terminal in JFK, and then they tell him there's a four-hour delay. So they say to him, the lady tells him from JetBlue, go, why don't you go over to the TWA hotel over there and just hang out at the bar and we'll call you when the plane is ready. He walks in there. He says, I have to tell you, Dr. Jack, I saw a sight I couldn't understand. 150 orthodox couple on a date. Uh, what is going on? Right. He says to me, I said to him, Matthew, that's real dating. Wow. You know what's, what they're doing? They're asking very clean significant questions in about a quiet environment. Yeah, how do you relate to me? Do you and I have the same ashkafa? Ashkafa comes from the word mishkafaim, glasses. I always tell people, <clears throat> love is not two people facing each other. Love is two people fa facing in the same direction. Wow. <laughs> Are we and you and I in the same direction? 100%. I said, in your world, they waste four or five years dating and they don't have a clue who the other person is. Here, they're getting down to tachlis. They're so asking true. questions. Yeah. How do you feel about this? And what's your position about that? And do you, uh, they're checking for anger. And they, like we said, they're checking for a guy who's cheap. And they're checking for lack of flexibility. And is looking for acts of chesed. Does the girl volunteer? Does she help around the house? Does she help the next door neighbor with the 10 kids? Wow. That's super powerful. I agree. Right? Yeah. That is the method, by the way. I mean, that is wow. <clears throat> Wow. I remember when I was dating, and I grew up in the Sephardic community, a lot of life was defined by money. Right. I didn't want that. I was lucky that I was a Tommy the Revig the Mill. You know what I used to do? I stuck his cassettes into the player, and when we went on dates, I wanted to see how they would react. Right. My wife, ultimately, was the one who was for me. Why? Because I said to her, I want to live a life like him. Wow. A life of growth. Right. A life where I'm a meaningful life. Right. And I say, when I dive into Hashem for life, I want a meaningful life. Right. I want a life... That I feel like, I die, even when I walk in my spoilers in the morning, Hashem, help me use my kaychas to help Kali right. Israel. Right. And what do you think is a shtadlas for a person, for a woman, for a girl, for, yeah. a, for a guy listening to this? What does a shtadlas for them mean? Does it mean that they... It means what? different things for different people. Like, for example, if you're very from, so you, 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 you have two or three shatchanim you talk to. Right. Plus, plus, you have your 30-second elevator pitch when people see you. At, at Simchas ah. or whatever, here's, what I am, here's who I am, here's what I'm up to, and, uh, you know, a brief discussion. I'm kind, considerate, outgoing, I'm, not, uh, I'm quiet, whatever it is. Do you and think that really part of a shtadlis is also that they should be a certain person or a certain type or l level up to a certain image? To not certain... image, but always growing your midos. Right. Yeah. Work on yourself. Work on yourself be... and, 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 and keep yourself busy doing good things. Work at your job, but do a little volunteer work. Help the wow. call. Get your get chusim for yourself. Once you hit a certain, Shalom Moshe used to say us. Once you hit a certain amount of tefillah and right. a certain work on your personality and character, right. bam, it happens. Right. I also know you do very interestingly. You do marriage counseling. I do. So, what is the number one biggest problem that you see couples are having right now? And Second question is, what do you think is the number one um, tip for a couple to do, to implement so that they don't have problems? I think one of the biggest problems we have is communication. Wow. Yeah. Or lack of. Or 
we're chasing dreams and we're chasing the American dream and we want this and we want that and we don't realize how it's so subtle how the car can start deviating off the lane until it's very far right yeah I, I that's fascinating that you say this because my own concept of marriage when people ask me what are you looking for whatever I always say the most important thing is communication yeah communicate from the first date communicate everything but do you feel that in the relationship they're basically weighing each other down because they're there's no taking each other for granted so, uh -huh. they're not giving enough compliments they're forgetting each other even though that they really loved each other and they really right, but connect uh, and they're meant for each other marriage but still, is a plant if it's well, not watered it dies but why wouldn't it be natural no, the plant is natural. To, like, wouldn't it be no, natural that to, they would love to nurse to it? They're, if I you know if I really love my wife, w what's there to nurture? Like, I'm I'm just coming home every day, and I love you, and I want to take care of you. I, I like you. I you, mean, you, I love you, how you look. I love what you. You're saying wear. that now. now. So what what happens? what happens when you're into a marriage five, ten, fifteen years? You tell me what happens. I tell you, familiarity breeds contempt. I see you all the time. You're not as special to me anymore. So um, how do we keep the spar going? Ah. Uh -huh. That's very important. There's what's it called seven seven seven. Every seven days, go on a date. Okay. Every seven weeks, one day off together. Every seven months, three day vacation. Nice. <laughs> I like it. It's your thing. I came up with it. Yeah. Love it. Very very nice and true. Interaction right? with each other. Right. Right. But some people maybe do lose it. Perhaps you have to go. You're good. Uh, probably I was supposed to, whatever, <laughs> I was supposed to talk to somebody in Miami. No, another five minutes. Yeah. I really, yeah. uh, because yeah. I, because I was speaking yeah. most of the time. I'm, I need this oh, to no. be minimum I'm of 50, 50. I'm happy Thank to you. share. Okay, good. Yeah. Now I have another few questions because I'm going to use this for myself. I'm, I'm actively dating. Um, what does define a good, happy marriage? Is the, that 777 or what, what does define a good marriage? I, I think like 50% of people do not have a good marriage. They're just living and surviving. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it's you. You can see it. You can. You, if you look around, you'll see the way they talk about each other does not look in any way like they're happy. So That's it's kind problem. of scary to consider the, that the, the, the edelkite starts to be diminished. That's a problem. Yeah. That's a problem. Well, we live in a Hashem in a very affluent time. Yeah. But more stressful than any than ever in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. People have added a lot of stresses to their life. Because of their, I need to do this, I got to get this, I want to do this, I want to do that. They add more things that they want out of life. Right. And that sort of like uh, tests the system. Right. And the they, expectations got a yeah, lot Yeah, a lot of expectations. Right. <clears throat> and we're, we're not also sheltered anymore. Right. We're not sheltered. Well, look at the Hasidic world and look how it's being challenged. Right. Yeah, I also know you talk about scenarios where you do encourage, not encourage, but you do say that it doesn't work anymore. Like, because people call you, you're the yeah. last stop. So they'll call you and they say this and this and this, and you'll say, yeah, it's not going to work. Like, you said you said one example with the flat tire. You're like, he, the guy came, he was making her feel guilty for having the flat tire, and you're like, get out of that marriage. Like, if he can't be the man when you have a struggle, right. then it's never going to work. I was thinking to myself, what do you mean? Maybe that man had a bad day today. But then I was thinking, no, you're right. Like if it's if diagnostic they, of a big evil. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It just shows yeah. exactly. So, what? When do you know? How do you know to call the the shot and say, guys, this is not working out? When you see that enough effort was made and the other party is not taking the what's the word taking that next step to changing right so you are just averse to change i'll give you an example i had a couple here last year with two children mm -hmm. and she's 26 and he's 27 and he continues to ne oh, neglect her on shabbos he's on tiktok till a minute before oh. yeah. and he does this every friday and on shabbos he just goes and he hangs out in the park with his friends leaves her with the two children and she said to me i'm done and I said to her, you're 26 with two kids. You know how difficult it's going to be to find you a shidduch? Yeah. Just give him another chance. I'll rehabilitate him. No, I am done. I'm out, out, out. I could not convince her otherwise. And she was so burnt by the lack of Did attention. Did he want to give it a chance? Did he want a chance? He, want, she didn't trust him anymore ah. because he, he continuously disappointed her. Yeah. 
Right. He burnt his bridges. Wow. Yeah, he burnt his bridges. that's how the story ended? Yeah. A few months later, he went to divorce. Wow. She was ready to become a single woman, a divorced mother for two kids. It's a problem. Um, it's a problem on her end? It's, it's, it's a problem from both of them. Because it's me. But she's rather, she'd rather get out of it. I'm also seeing Rahman Atsilan, a lot of infidelity. Mm-hmm. A lot. A lot of cheating. Wow. Yeah. Wow. A lot of divorced people coming in here with that issue. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think that that comes back to, to the self-worth that we discussed. Yeah. To the, the, the vision, the image of the deeper understanding. Like, you can never be satisfied if you don't take care of yourself. You can right. never be satisfied if you don't have the direction of... Why am I married? And, th- and that's why the, all the people calling me a nebuch for being 26 and not married. No, 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 no. I'm very, very lucky. I want to have all yeah. this information yeah. before I get married. I want to know everything. I want to know everything. I want I want to know about, about, about the cheating. I want to know about the people that are unhappy, about the divorce rate, about the... The, the 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 single parents and the, and the struggling parents and the, the all these things so that i can at least know what i'm against that you know and yeah. I, yes so wow yeah rabbi jack thank you so much Dr. i was rabbi, honored i appreciate to share this. and to learn this is going to be amazing it's going to go viral i'm going to put it onto my uh, platform Hashem. and uh, i have can I know how to tens of thousands of listeners like unexpected i did not especially with the podcast and i always say this like yeah. I had no, the podcast, I, I felt like two, three hundred people will listen to it, but it just, the amount, it goes so viral and people download it and they send it and then they, even in the yeshivas on, on the Sansa clips, they just love listening to to new, uh, to, to the, the concepts that the, the people talk, they're hungry for, for information because what we just spoke about hmm. Nobody talks about it. Like you said, the education, nobody talks about it. Nobody says the Sanchaidro and Yeshiva, or there's no public course out there. Of course, you can go to coaches. There's many coaches out there. But where do you get this information for free? Rarely. No. You know? So, no. I, so I don't shit. mind hitting new frontiers. Right. In order, people say to me about me, they said, you're tough, but you're straight. Yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> I love your style. I yeah. watch a lot of your speeches. Yeah. You, you're very... And you say a story with Geschmack, it's a, it's, mm-hmm. it's a machaya to listen. So, yeah, guys, I would encourage you to check out Rabbi Dr. Jake. And uh, you can find a lot of his videos on YouTube. You can find the... Uh, Our website, uh, Dr. Jack Dating. Dr. Dr. Jack. Uh, the, well, yeah. call me. Call me. I'll give them my number, right? Yeah. If you have any need for dating coaching or you want to get matched up or shatchanis or marriage, 305. 305- 206-1916, Baruch Hashem, Ellie and I sitting in this beautiful office that my wife designed. You can come and stop in. We'd be happy to host you. Amazing. amazing. Is there anything we can do for you? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so every, thank you, everybody, for listening. Please remember to like and, and uh, subscribe. And please, if you can, share this podcast and leave a comment. That really helps me out. Thank you so much. Bop, do, 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 do,